яблоко. Привет, друзья! And welcome to another It's Too Hot in California Me to Cook, Travel, or Go Anywhere. So I'm camping in my air-conditioned room and watching movies. So today, it's what I call a review on a combat comedy. The detached mission, solo voyage, uh, whatever it's called. Um, so a bit of some backstory on this, kind of a war story, I suppose. Um, my last tour in Iraq was indeed a boring one. Uh, most of the time I had nothing to do but surf the web. Um, I'd watch, download a lot of movies from my youth, a lot of Cold War era flicks uh, such as Red Dawn, uh, the original from 1984 that is. The, the remake was stupid -er. Uh I came across this clip Hold it. Drop your gun. Brose automat. Shit. And the quest was on. I I had to not only find a full version, but one with subtitles or a voiceover. Well, I, I found a voiceover that I, I downloaded. Uh, now since then, uh, Soviet Movies Online has um, changed and I don't have a membership. Um, you know, to pay to watch these movies. Uh, Riberta, here's a hint. If you share my videos, help me get more subscribers and click on those ads, um, it's going to help me out a lot, like to get a membership for Soviet movies online because they got some pretty good movies. I, I downloaded a couple. Um, okay, L let me say first, I, I get what the producer was going for. Uh, it basically, a, a Soviet parody of American action movies of the time, the 1980s. It was good, but oh man, uh, for me, it, it was also, what the hell? <laughs> so the plot. Well, it basically is a story of a deranged CIA agent bent on starting World War III. And is thwarted kind of by accident by a group of naval infantry soldiers, basically Soviet Marines. Um, the accident, of course, is when a rescue mission of an American airline pilot who's out fortune hunting. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty funny during that segment. I'm thinking, is this supposed to be the, the Soviet version of the American version of, well, the Soviet ideals? And, and instead of doing, you know, in, instead of showing the little clips here, um, here here's, here's the clip I'm talking about. Uh, it's the English version. What's he say? That no one lives on these islands. He's a pilot for Island Airways. He says he found them just by chance. He wants one. He thinks finding something means owning it. <laughs> a capitalist. And I'm proud of it, baby. Right on. Okay. Okay, confusing. I know. So the plot was decent. Uh, now on to a few things. Um, first, I love ripping apart accuracy. Now, I, I get this was done in the 80s, and I get this was a parody of American action movies. But I, I don't think US movies are that inaccurate about stuff. I mean, at, at least in, in Red Dawn, we tried to make a T-72 and a Hind Model A. I mean, the, the Nimitz. Wait, the Nimitz. 
littered with beers? No, not that Nimitz. Yeah, that one, that one. <laughs> Hell, even in days when I was a tanker. Okay, okay. We had beers on maneuvers, but not so blatantly screwed around the tank like here. Um, the, the picking Cuba as Florida. Okay, not not too bad. Uh, it kind of believable. Um, but <laughs> the American uniforms. This is my three. Okay, okay, I get that most U.S. depictions of Russian uniforms aren't the best. I mean, Red Dawn here. Um, wait, wait. I, I, I'm even going to go further back. Uh, Red Nightmare, 1960 something. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but this guy not only wrecked it but nuked it from orbit. Hell, it makes most World War II movies from the 60s look hi historically accurate. And if you know anything about US movies, well, okay, look. Yeah. And this is my favorite movie. No, this one's not my favorite movie. I mean, Oversized name tags, oversized ranks, um, uh, and, and what the hell is what that camouflage? Hell, even on American TV during the 80s, every soldier was in a Vietnam era uniform. I, I mean, you could have got used that and gotten away with it better. Hell, you could probably have used Cuban uniforms or digit. And what's up with the grooming standards? This guy looks like a whacked out survivalist who did Woodstock. I mean, let's let's look at this clip from uh, a TV movie that I had called World War Three. Okay, this is this is David Soul from Starsky and Hutch. He's not within grooming standards either. But okay, that gr grooming standards for an NBC TV movie. Grooming standards for Solo Voyage. Привет! I am a Special Forces rock star in the first heavy metal unit. <sighs> the, the music. Oh, the music. I loved it. We, we have a saying here. Straight to video. And that music was right up there. It reminded me of one of those, uh, some of those stupid sequels no one hears about, like uh, Delta Force 4 or American Ninja 6 or um, any 80s US Kung Fu movie that did not have Chuck Norris or Steven Seagal. I mean, the whole soundtrack for movies I'm talking about played on a synth keyboard. And sometimes a saxophone. 80s were, were really something on saxophones for some reason. The action sequences. Yes. Da. This was 80s action movies, especially this this scene with the knives. Though the one that got me going here. Okay. I mean, yeah. But what an amazing anti-climax to stopping the missiles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, here we would have a half hour beat down with the bad guy. Uh, stick him with a bayonet near the missile exhaust. Fire off a rocket launcher and then the missile would self-destruct because he's like still alive somehow. Or like Chuck Norris here in Invasion USA. Uh, here, here, oh look, Yuri, I found our switch. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's magical, it's, it's amazing, it's perfect. It is perfect 
in my opinion, a, 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 a Soviet solution to an American problem. <laughs> I mean, like I said, we'd be doing all this sort of crazy stuff to kill the bad guy in a very spectacular way and all that. And it's just like here. Okay, I've stopped war. Well, well done. Well worth the whole movie. Uh, now, learning some things also from Roman who, who saw this. This English dub version was not word for word correct. Oh uh, well, it was still pretty good. Um, so, so Solo Voyage gets a thumb up for me. Honestly, I, I'd love to see a remake, uh, but don't put Michael Bay in charge. We, we don't need that much explosions or, or J.J. Abrams. I mean, that's all I need is a massive amounts of lens flare. Um, I, I did want to point out one other thing before I went with the uh, uh, closing notes here. Um, I did also like the ending uh, to a point. I mean, the ending, that was really Hollywood. I mean, you, you got you got the bad guy and he crawls out of the ship that's sinking and for some reason from miles away or wherever the heck he is he's able to fire off a burst from an M16 and kill the commander um yeah okay reality I couldn't see you firing off uh, an RPG and hit him from a ship that far out let alone an M16 and then to fire back with an AK and kill him or maybe he just died I don't know <laughs> like I said wonderful wonderful parody on American action movies I thought it was extremely hilarious and extremely entertaining and that was one of the things I really liked the most is I was entertained I was well entertained uh, and that's what I like about watching movies I want to be entertained I don't want to be distracted I want to be entertained so I can sit around you know the the next morning at a, at a formation or, or something like that going hey I just saw this wickedly stupid movie that was that, that just wasted two hours of my life away and it was great <laughs> um, and that's what I kind of like about watching American action movies is I can escape for a couple hours I can escape I can be entertained um, and you know during this heat wave I really don't want to go out and cook because it is very hot um, this is the current temperature outside this is the current temperature in my room and I'm yeah I'm wearing shorts <laughs> I don't ever wear shorts um, so yeah you know I just kind of sit in my room and uh, try not to uh, try not to really do a lot of projects but you know there's still a lot of things that have to be done and mostly I'm just sitting in here I'm either playing World of Tanks or I'm watching old movies again um, and you know are you about to are any of you interested on my take of American action movies I, I know the previous video I talked about you know TV when I was growing up but uh, yeah action movies was was kind of my life uh, I mean how easy is it to watch it nowadays over there I mean I I'd, I'd really be intrigued by your view um, as I said right now until this heat wave is over I'll, I'll be sitting in my room I'll be watching TV watching movies watching old TV reruns and things like that and because I do want to get a video out a week to share my life with you folks of Russia and Eastern Europe um, 
I'd just be interested to know, you know, is there an American action movie that you would like me to review? I've got like a terabyte. <laughs> and that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, that. I'll, I'll be doing a couple more reviews. I've got a couple more movies that I wanted to share with you. One is my all-time favorite American action movie. And the other one I thought after this one would be the 1984 Red Dawn. And what I liked about it, what was interesting about it, and mostly with Red Dawn, what I would like to know is I would like to know your views on the movie. Not so much the plot line, but just how bad did we screw up? <laughs> so, until next time, Perusia, um, Yabloko, Heat, what is Heat in Russian? Of course, you know, my, my little, my little word of the day doesn't say it's too damn hot. Um, but yeah, um, until next time, Yablico, uh, Dr. Pepria, lots of it, chai, cold chai, uh, iced tea, please, and uh, baka. Capitalist, man, proud of it, baby. Right on.